So today we're going to show you how to do the precipitation of PBI2 lab. What kind of a reaction is this we're dealing with? Mmm, look at this. Lisa? Double replacement. This is a double replacement reaction, otherwise known as precipitation. Good. So, we know a little bit now about how to calculate limiting reactants and uh, excess reactants. We're not going to do that with this, and in fact, what we're going to end up doing at the end of this lab is we're going to end up doing something called calculating a percent yield based on what's called a theoretical yield. That's going to be the subject of our next video that we're going to watch. We're going to start with two reactants, and we're going to make some products. One of the reactants is going to be limiting. In fact, it's going to be the NAI. So we're going to start with that as the beginning for all of our calculations. And at the very beginning, it says I want to, I want to measure out between 1.48 and 1.52 grams of NAI. I want to have about 1.50 grams. So I'll measure that out right now. Now what's going to happen is you're not going to use my data. I'm just going to give an approximation here. I have a whole bunch of data slips right here that everybody is going to take from. Alright, perfect. 1.50 grams. And it tells me to put that in the beaker, I believe. And I'm going to rinse it down with a little water. and dissolve the NAI. And it's very soluble, and in fact, it dissolved right away. In the instructions, it said that you may need to heat it up, but you don't need to heat it up. Oh, I just realized there's no ice bath. I'm not going to end up using an ice bath because I don't have one. Secondly, we're going to measure out the lead nitrate. How much lead nitrate did we say we're going to need? Who got that calculation? Alex? 1.66. Okay, so it says 1.66 grams, but in the, in the instructions it says we're going to add a little bit more than that. So if you look in the instructions, it says you're going to add about 0.05 to 0.09 grams more than we calculated. Why am I doing that? What am I making this reactant by adding a little bit more of it? What would we call, Emily? The excess, yeah, I'm making this the excess reactant. So I'm going to start off with 1.66 grams, and I'm going to look for a little bit more than that. By the way, I'm wearing my gloves because this is a lead salt, and lead salts are all poisonous if we ingest them. Okay, so 1.71 grams, that fits the bill, right? 1.66 plus 0.05. Uh, that's, the, like, lead salt. that's the lead salt. Okay, now, you notice the colors here. These are both white, clear, colorless salts. So, I dissolve the lead salt, and it's lead nitrate, and what do we know about all nitrate salts? They're soluble, right? They're soluble, but sometimes it takes a little bit more water to dissolve them than, than with others. All right, so I've got two solutions here, both colorless solutions, both from white salts. Now, here's the cool part. When you mix the two of them, you may have heard that there's problems in old houses with lead paint, right? Have you heard about lead paint problems? Why would they use lead in paint? Here's why. Look at that color. Isn't that pretty? Everybody see the color? Mrs. Rinaldi, can you see it on there? That beautiful yellow, lead salts, can often make a beautiful, beautiful set of colors. And very vivid colors. By the way, I'm rinsing out, making sure I clear out all the lead salt from here. Oh, I'm 
sorry. Thank you. And now I'm ready to do my filtration. Normally what I do is I put this in ice to cool it down a little bit to make sure it all precipitated. But I just wanted to demonstrate for you the idea of doing this. So remember from our sand and salt lab, yeah, Lisa. Um, when the reaction took place, was it the glass heated at all? The glass, no, it didn't. This is not, this reaction doesn't give off a lot of heat. All right, so the next step is to do my filtration. I'm going to filter all that beautiful yellow salt. And one of the things you would have seen is on the side bench tomorrow, uh, we had done this as a class. There would have been 12 of these very pretty filter papers with the very pretty yellow salt on it that we'd have to mass out. All right, so what I'm going to do now is let this filter, and we'll come back and take a look at it. One of the things I'm looking for here is that the liquid coming through is supposed to be nice and clear, which it is. We're going to capture all of the lead salt, the lead uh, lead iodide up at the top here, and then coming through in the bottom, inside this flask is going to be the other, re other product, which is the sodium nitrate. Again, sodium and nitrate, both ions that make soluble product. So the sodium nitrate is soluble, and what we would do if we were going to collect this overnight is we'd take the flask and we'd put it in the oven to dry, evaporate off the water, and we'd be done. All right? Questions? All right, so but here's what we're going to do now.